Slides, no PowerPoints. Uh, this is helpful because it's got a clock in the bottom, which may keep me honest. Got a blank page. That is how almost all public speaking begins with a blank page. What I'd like to do now is get some audience participation. You don't have to stand up here and do it. You're going to think and you're going to talk to the person next to you. I'm going to divide it up. Just pick someone that you like or don't like, or someone who's close to you. I'd like to spend two minutes talking about what you think makes a good public speaker and what makes a bad public speaker. It could be single word answers, it could be a sentence, what are the characteristics <coughs> of good and bad public speakers? You have two minutes. Go! <laughs> So I would like 
Jerry, can you give us an example out of your conversation of what is a good characteristic of a public speaker? Knowledge of the topic or the conversation they're going to have. Great. Knowledge of the topic. Write that down, please. We'll note some of them up here. Michelle, a bad characteristic of a public speaker. Being unprepared. Being unprepared. Hands up anyone who had being unprepared. We've got a few. Okay, who was unprepared for saying unprepared? <laughs> I will try and take a bad joke opportunity. Joke, a good public speaker characteristic. Projecting confidence. Projecting confidence. Fire mm -hmm. bad. Chris, I would say, Marianne, on the phone, I would say that they, they make a connection, but I have a connection with the audience. Okay, having a connection with the audience. I would add remembering there are people on the phone. Well, that would be bad. <laughs> <laughs> Not knowing your audience. Not knowing your audience is a bad thing. Okay. Um, did you want bad or good? Good, please. Thank you. Um, we actually wrote down humor, like good. Humor. Having good humor. Friends. Bad. Appropriate. Um, <laughs> talking in a monotone, just not, not ah. being. Monotone having voice. Good. Yes. Hands up who had monotone voice or something connected with voice. Nice. Okay. Hayley. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Don't oh. pick on the person who's just heading out of the room. Don't <laughs> call on that either. <laughs> sorry. Can I have a good characteristic? Repeating yourself or um, just repeating a topic? Repetition yeah. for, for, to add clarity? Yeah. And repetition for clarity. Nice. So we've got a few good pieces here. Who has hands up if you have something else? Lots of stuff. <laughs> Candice? I, I think we're. We'll being in harmony with making a connection with the audience, so good eye contact. Good eye contact, yes. Who else had a hand up? James. Annoying mannerism. <laughs> annoying mannerisms. Would you care to share an example of annoying mannerisms? They. Drooly. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> James, did you have an example in life? Well, yeah, they just, they're constantly fidgeting or, or nervous when they're talking. Yeah, okay. On the phone, do we have anyone on the phone who had something extra to share? Do we have anyone on the phone? <laughs> Mary Ann. <laughs> hey, yeah, you know, Chris, this is Therese. I know um, me, Brian, and, and Arnold were changing, and what we say was pretty much the same as already up there. We talked about confidence, knowing your you know, knowing your stuff, if someone likes, you know, the person, what they're talking about, that they're knowledgeable of the topic. So you already have to All right. Thank you. Dana. Use too many connected words. Too many connected words, such as? Um, like. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know, so. So is fine. I will start more sentences with so. I, maybe I should change the dusty mode. Yes, but so is fine. Being aware of that is, can be helpful, and it's a challenging and it's great, it's one of the reasons that I'm filming. Kim? I think a good public speaker has practiced their presentation, their speech beforehand. A bad public speaker will rely too heavily on the props or the PowerPoint or a piece of paper to guide them through their discussion. Yes, that's great. There are two pieces there. The practice is a good thing, and then bad is too much reliance on props. If you're in the circus, props is great. <laughs> oh, great. Grammar is also an important thing, but put that on the list. But if you're standing in front of a group and you're fumbling with an actual prop, or you're talking to the screen because that's where all your information is, the audience is you. So look and face the audience. We've got time for one or two more. Uh, we have one in the room. Hang on, Marianne. We got, was that Kate? Oh, I was going to add for on the good list is uh, like clarity of your message. Clarity of message. Uh, we've got repetition to add clarity, but overall we can put that up there. Clarity of message as well. All right, one more. First person put my hand. James. Bad speaker. They don't believe in their message. They don't believe in their message. That's a great one to finish on. 
it ties together a few different pieces, and if I'm putting words in your mouth, you let me know. But if you don't know your topic, it's going to be challenging to speak. If I ask any of you to stand up and tell me what you did at the weekend, you're probably going to be okay to do that. If I ask any of you to stand up and give us a detailed description of the tail structure of a peacock in plume, that might be a little harder. Can you do that? <laughs> Later, by the uh, <laughs> the, Knowing the topic, having confidence in the topic is important, but believing in it. If I'm trying to convince you to public speak, I'm standing here saying, You should all come to Toastmasters. It's great. Um, there's some good points and bad points. The good stuff is that you get to practice, and the bad stuff. <laughs> we come along, we're having a membership drive, it's, um, it's important that we do it. Hey, come on guys, you should all be involved. In That's not a good message. Like, come to Toastmasters because you get to stand up in front of people and it's terrifying, but it's also great. And we have seen every single person who comes along go from, some people come along and they are shaking, and they end up standing in front of rooms like this, speaking outwardly with confidence, Inwardly, they're, they're shaking like a chihuahua, but outwardly, it's not. I believe in your message, Dana. Not for me, No? Okay, we're good. So these are good and bad things. Also, if you'd like the opposite, let's just do the converse of each one of these. If you've got a good characteristic, knowledge of topic, a bad speaker is someone who doesn't know the topic. We're not going to rewrite it. There we are. We've had a group engagement. Talked about good and bad characteristics, we've had a lot of public speaking. And now we're going to watch a video. And what I would like you to do is keep in mind these things. We're going to talk about the video, I'll stop it partway through. But we're going to talk about what are the good and bad characteristics of this public figure giving a public speech. I hope you enjoy this as much as I do. Ladies and gentlemen of the Star County Republican Party Executive Committee, good evening. And thank you, not only for your attendance, but for allowing me the opportunity to speak. My name is Bill Davidson, and I am seeking our party's nomination for the position of Star County Treasurer on November 10th. November 2010, excuse me. In terms of my background, I am from the village of Minerva, where I am serving my 13th year as a service as a Minerva Council member. In terms of education, I have a bachelor's degree in sociology, a bachelor's degree in history, a master's degree in public administration, and a master's degree in communication. <laughs> Thank you. 
immigrant in Portugal. We're talking a business as usual. Drastic times require what? Drastic measures, yes! <laughs> Was he elected? I don't know. I will share the link. It goes on for about another three or four minutes. It actually gets better in terms of comedic value. There's only so much I can take. I feel like I'm going to have a stroke watching the guy having a stroke. This is real. So, Abby, you asked the question is this real? Yes. Did he win? <laughs> he makes a statement in this that if nominated, he will win. Huh? <laughs> he got nominated. Huh? And he lost. <laughs> <laughs> but he did get a lot of national airtime. He was interviewed. He was a lot calmer in the interviews than like you see and so on than he was during this. So this is the position of Stop County Treasurer! <laughs> And he's going for. Um, I think the context was to know your topic and know your audience. I'm not sure the audience at the Republicans for Star County Treasurer Convention were expecting quite this show. But he was audible. <laughs> Back to the, the list. I'm going to take. Watch out! I'm going to take them off the screen. Um, <laughs> so knowledge of the topic. He knew. The Star County Treasurer's office was what? Oh, oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got some good points. But he had to go back and but read he, that. He, <laughs> 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 he, I'm not sure he knew it. He had it on a piece of paper, all right? <laughs> it was written somewhere. Yes. Yeah. So let me remember. He knew his topic, but he'd prepared a speech. This is one of the pitfalls of public speaking, and it's personal advice, but it's advice that's been given to me. <coughs> if you're standing up and speaking, unless you're in a play, don't memorize a script, because you'll spend more time trying to remember the script. If you know the content, just remember what you're going to project. A tip that you can take away, and this is something that I use when speaking, I will boil down the presentation into a series of questions, and then I will ask either myself the question, then give the answer. So you can all answer a question. Or I will ask the question to the audience. I start today by saying, what are we going to cover today? And that immediately tells me, I need to tell you what we're going to cover. But it also tells you that I'm going to give you that information. And the question tends to focus the room as well. So boil your presentation down into a series of questions and answers. If you have notes, put them in a place you can see. And don't go and fall over the room and suggest come back to my notes and back <laughs> over here. Unless you're doing it. Like so moving around the room and using notes. What what else did you see? Did he make a connection with the audience? <laughs> it's hard to say. Did he scare me out? Did he scare me out? Well, you did say he got out of it. He did say he got out of it. Maybe he's the place. only one running, huh? <laughs> I think that was a good example of the message getting lost in the emotion. Because people are now focusing on what he's doing, not really focusing on what his message is. Absolutely. I just think that he misread his audience because I can see it on like a really fired up polit political rally that I, that same speech with everybody screaming and yelling and saying, right. yeah. I mean, so, so the, more so the, the speaker will be the same, but the audience will be different. So I think you misread that. It's if it's like elect me for the MMA fighting champion of the world, stop <laughs> county treasurer. Not so much. Uh, what else did you take away from that? Uh, the time on this list or not on this list? He made humor, but I don't think he likes it. He hit the humor button, and we all laughed probably at him, not so much with it. You were a I don't know what to say right now. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there are a lot of Red Bulls and amphetamines involved. Bad speakers take drugs. Annoying air isn't for sure. Yeah. yeah. Annoying. What was an annoying air? Yelling. Wait, we got yelling. That's going back and forth. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. He was extra. Yeah. yeah. He was standing in the back of the room. He was pissed at that. Screaming at his audience. Screaming at the audience. You had someone say something about that? I said he was extra animated. He was extra animated. He ticked the body language box. <laughs> Let's talk about body language. <laughs> wasn't wanted to. Let's talk about body language for a moment. He had body language, yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did he have the right body language? Mm -hmm. He had angry body language. Angry body language. Uh, it's very tense. There's some examples of it. I'm exhibiting body language at the moment. I'm actually doing one of my bad habits of trying to get out. I rock. <laughs> this is my I rock. It's really obvious. If you film yourself, play it back mm -hmm. on double speed. You see people do this. <laughs> <laughs> you might not notice it. Um, so I learned not to do this. Unfortunately, I tend to do a slight forward backward step. Step to it to find your feet and do this. Who here has concerns about what to do with their hands? When they get up to speed. Okay, I've got a lot of nods, but a few hands up in the room. There's quite a simple trick for what to do with your hands. And anyone who's seen Steve Jobs, uh, Bill Gates, and so on present, they do this. There is a box. No one has seen a Home Depot book box, a small 12 by 12 by 18 box. Imagine you have that box in front of you. You can do almost anything with your hands in this box, and it is okay. Promise is not exactly the same thing again and again. If you do that same expression outside the box, it looks unusual. <laughs> Unless you're gesturing for effect. You can do this to help the speech move along. But if you do it outside the box, <laughs> <laughs> or outside the box, <laughs> but if you do it inside the box, it's okay. <laughs> if you want to gesture and you're doing this, well, that's a little far away. Here's okay, and there you've got two rectangles. <laughs> <laughs> if you're worried about what to do with your hands, put them together and hold them in the middle of this box. And just use this little box. And it was a great tip that got me out of all sorts of YMCA type of things. I have a habit of speaking with my hand in my pocket, which, and I talk with my hands, which meant I was talking with my hand. <laughs> so the hand comes up into the box. It works in this audience, and then I wouldn't do this when. <laughs> for a guy who was not who was not appropriately confident for his audience, who was going back to his notes, was going through a lot of things, he used very few connector words. Well, he had a degree in communication. <laughs> <laughs> Huge pauses instead of connector words. Chris, you made a point about not memorizing earlier, um, but I think one of his biggest things that he did was that he would have a script and he would not memorize his favorite quote. If you're going to give a quote, it's worth reading the script. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I was going to ask how fast long on the phone we're not distracted by body language and so on. But I can send this list out. There are a couple of other items, so we'll send it out. All of them. Send it out. But think about how this can relate to how we speak on the phone. If we're speaking on the phone in front of five people, in front of 105 people, in front of 100 people, that's public speaking. This is a great opportunity. You're doing it, you're practicing it. There are some things that you can take away from that. The last thoughts are from Melissa. There are a few points that are great things just tips when presenting in a room like this. And I'm going to read from them so that I get it right and don't get quite incorrect. <laughs> the first one is when stand presenting on a screen like this, stand in as much as you can on this side. Because I can point at this and I'm not in the way. And most people read left to right. If I'm on the other side pointing, then people are looking at my finger and trying to get across and work out where they're heading back to. So if, if you can stand on the side, it's not the end of the world, but it helps. Engage the audience using questions as we've done and answers. Whenever I ask if anyone's got a question or if anyone wants to put their hand up to show, like, what did I do? I put my own hand up. And Melissa does this. Notice she'll, she'll stand there and she'll say, What do you all think? Do you all agree? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not, I hope some of us were pressured into saying yes, maybe, but it engages the audience. Put pressure on the audience. Pay attention by saying names, by calling out folks in different areas, by doing that. If you just ask, does anyone have any questions, and scan and don't do it, that's not as much as, oh, David, it looks as though you had a question. If you do, great. If not, sorry, I was there. Does anyone else have any questions? Sarah, is there Paul, anything? That's a way to engage the audience, and it helps people to get involved. Don't pace, it's distracting. I'm talking. Don't rock back and forth. And Melissa says, don't pace. It is distracting. If you're doing a big engaging speech, that's okay. If you've got something on the screen, if you want to focus there, you've got to focus on it. Make sure it's a good, it's a good tip. And here's uh, one of my favorites. If you are presenting, stand, don't sit. Even if it's in a small room and you're presenting with three or four people, stand. Because when you stand up, the energy doesn't sink out of you. You sit down, all the energy comes out of your body. <laughs> if you stand up, you project a bit of energy, and that helps engage the audience. They are Melissa's top tips. It is exactly 12 o'clock. <laughs> Before, uh, before we do this, kind of come up here and ask some closing comments. Before we do that, I want to thank 